Excel has some great tools to test for statistical significance. One of them is the chi-square test. In this video I will focus on the chi-square test. If you want to know more about statistical testing I would recommend the book Excel 2007 for Scientists or the CD-ROM Excel 2007 for Scientists. It will tell you more about testing for significance. A very common test is the Z-test. However, the Z-test checks for significance between means of populations and samples if they are larger than 30 cases. So under, if your sample is under 30 cases, you cannot use the Z-test, at least not reliably. For that kind of situation, we have the T-test. Students' T-test is for significance testing for samples of all sizes. Then there is also an F-test, which tests for significant difference, differences between variances. And then finally there is the chi-square test. It's for frequencies. Each time you deal with frequencies, you need the chi-square test. We will just focus on the chi-square test, and for all the other tests I refer to the book or the CD-ROM that I just mentioned. I have a situation here where we have frequencies for a large group of patients we tested for an estrogen fat tumor situation by using a medication or a placebo and we found out how often the tumor was stopped and how often it recurred. At the outskirts here we find just subtotals, they are calculated, but these are the observed frequencies. The null hypothesis says there is no dependence whether you had a medication or a placebo, it doesn't make a difference, it's just a matter of randomness. Results may vary when you repeat it with another sample, you might get different results. So how can we test whether this is significantly different? So we are going to calculate here what the expected frequency would be for this subgroup. Use the subtotal of the medication group times the subtotal for the recurrence group and divide it by the grand total. 2500 in D4. I use the key F4 to make sure that D4 is always located in D but 4 can change into D5. Times the subtotal of the recurrency group. Always in row 6. So I press F4 several times until I get B string sign 6 divided by 5000 log D and log 6. Copy that formula into the other cells. Please do not round off. It's really important that you also get the decimal calculations. These were the expected frequency if there is no connection between medication or placebo if they have the same results. So we are going to test is there a significant difference, yes or no. The null hypothesis says no, they are completely independent of each other. If there are differences, that's a matter of randomness. The chi-test will tell us. The chi-test is a function that Microsoft created. And you have a choice for two options if you have a newer version of Excel. In older versions you had to use chi-test, in 2010-2013 you can use chi-square test. They do basically the same, but the chi-square test will not work in older versions. So take your pick. What is the actual range? That means the observed frequencies. B4 for C5, what is the expected range? B12 for C13, and we find that the probability of having these numbers is very low. It's not even 1%, it's 0.1%. The lower that probability is, the more unlikely it is that these differences are the result of randomness. So I would say that medication has a significant effect on stopping estrogen fat tumors. 
chi-square test works with this formula in case you are interested. I put in cell G4 and G5 a verdict based on a 5% confidence level we would say there is a significant difference. Based on a 1% confidence level, it is highly significant. However, when you do this kind of things, always be aware that there can be confounding variables, variables that interfere with your result. In this case, someone came up with the idea, couldn't it be that radiation has an effect? Maybe some people were radi had radiation, some did not have radiation. They found these frequencies. So all we have to do now is find the expected frequencies in all these subcategories. Equals the subtotal for medication, always in F, so lock F times the recurrency no radiance subtotal, always in 7, so lock 7, and divided by the grand total, lock both. We would expect these many in this subgroup, and those are the other ones. The chi test, or chi square test, would tell us whether this is significantly different. Again, the actual range versus the expected range. And we found a not highly, but a significant difference. How important is the chi-square test? We found out there are other tests, like the Z-test, the T-test, and the F-test. However, I have bad news for you. The Z test and the T test cannot, used, cannot be used if the sample is not normally distributed. I will show you how to test for that. I told you already the Z test has another limitation. It cannot be used for samples that are smaller than 30 cases. But T test has also a limitation. It, it needs to be randomly distributed. The F-test has the same condition. So very often, you have no other choice than using the chi-square test. So we are going to look at that situation. In this case, we used three, four different ethnic groups and tested for high blood pressure. We want to find out whether ethnicity has a significant impact on blood pressure. Why can't we use T-test, because we don't have more than 30 cases. Why can't we even use the T-test? Because each subgroup is not always normally distributed. How do you test that? You test that with the skew function. The skew function tells you what's the normal distribution value is for that subgroup. If a, a subgroup is very skewed, you cannot use the t-test. So we put a verdict here, for instance, it turns out that this subgroup in column C is significantly skewed. A plus skew value means it is tailed to the right, a minus one means it's still to the left. So I put in C26 this formula. If the absolute value of C is greater than two times the square root of six divided by the number of counts, then we have a significantly skewed situation. Besides, we found out for the F-test that these two F-test values are sig significantly low. That means that the variances between those two subgroups vary significantly. If that's the case, you cannot use the T-test. Another reason why the T-test would not be good, you would have to compare group A with group B, group A with group C, group A with group D, B with C, B with D. 
each t-test has a 5% error margin, so you would have a, a very high error level. So in that kind of situation, we need a chi-test. The chi-test doesn't have those conditions. So what are we going to do? Remember, chi-test works with frequencies, so we have to put them in categories. I came up with three categories. The group up to 170 blood pressure, systolic blood pressure, between 170 and 190, between 190 and 210, assuming that there is no one over 210. So we need to know here how many people are in this group for African Americans, Caucasians, Hispanics, Native Americans. We use here the frequency function. Frequency function makes sure that you can calculate what the subgroups are. The data array is A2 for African Americans through A23. We leave it that way, so when we copy the formula to the right, it will change into B2, which is the Caucasians, etc. The bins array is 170 through 210, always in that range. This is an, what they call an array function. I won't explain that here right now. So you have to use control shift enter. And it says these were the frequencies for the African Americans. Copying that to the right. And those were the frequencies for the three other ethnic groups. These were calculated totals. All we have to do now is calculate the expected frequencies. These were the observed frequencies. Now we need the expected frequencies. 33, always in L, times 22, always in 12, divided by the grand total, always in L12. Lock both row and column. And these are the expected frequencies. If there were no relationship between ethnicity and blood pressure. So finally, we need the chi-test difference. The actual range versus the expected range. It's a very simple test, and it gives you the probability that that occurs by mere randomness. 10%. At a 5% confidence level, we ha don't have enough ammunition to say that ethnicity is correlated with blood pressure. I hope I gave you some feeling for the power of the chi-square test. You may need it more often than you think. The only problem is you have to reshuffle your data into categories. And there is one condition that I should really mention too. The subgroups may not have less than five people in their samples. If one of those groups is less than five, you have to make different categories. Good luck with chi-test. You can find much more on this kind of testing in the CD-ROM Excel 2007 for scientists. It has an enormous collection. Go through them at your own pace, or you, if you like a book better, go for the book Excel 2007 for Scientists. It uses the same kind of content. They both have general spreadsheet techniques, data analysis, plotting data, curve fitting and regression, and of course statistical analysis, including the chi-test, but much, much more. My last name is pronounced as Verschuren. I wrote the, C the book and the CD-ROM. You can find them at mrexcel.com, at amazon.com, or at genesispc.com slash links.htm.